Hello, everyone. This is Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister, the Honey Badger. Welcome to the Beyond Bitcoin Show. Today is August the 8th, 2020. Strong hand, unconfiscatable. Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. Do not accept a new normal, people. Fitting in is overrated. Personal responsibility is a new counterculture. Deferral of gratification, conviction, golden age. All right, strive for greatness, people. All right, hello, my elite friends. How are you doing tonight? 8-8. Eight, eight. Today is 8-8. Eight, eight, or Yes, it was. It still is 8-8 eight, eight in a, a big hunk of the United States of America. Hello, my elite friends. Do you have questions? I have answers. Type them in. Do uh, Type in proud Zionist Jew. Uh, get my attention somehow here on the backup channel. Remember, all the other days of the week, we're on the main channel at Bitcoin Meister. You can go over there. Just follow me on Twitter at TechBalt, T-E-C-H-B-A-L-T, or just go to DisruptMeister.com or SportsMeister.com. You'll get all the shows there. So uh, let's jump into the, the news of the day. And if you have questions, you know, make, make sure they're beyond Bitcoin. This is We're not really talking about Bitcoin on this, this show. That's why it's called the Beyond Bitcoin Show. All right, let's start with a Doug, a Doug Casey quote. Oh, he's still on fire. He's right about some things, not about other things. Unity has also become poisonous. There's another one. That's another one, a term, uh, that moronic politicians love to invoke. We've got to have unity. No, we don't have to have unity. In fact, we shouldn't have unity. Unity is dangerous. It's what happens when all the chimpanzees get together and start hooting and panting to create a war. People like Hitler, Stalin, and Mao required unity. Be a unique beast, people. Don't, don't join the herd. There is no need for a herd. If the leaders uh, are trying to round up a herd, they want blind unity. Not a good thing. And that's an interesting way of looking at it from the, the great Doug Casey. Now, the other day, on one of the, my regular, uh, this is the Beyond Bitcoin show, but on the One Bitcoin show, <laughs> I just killed the fly. Uh, on the One Bitcoin show, there was a question, and here it was from Towers Comics. And I told him to watch the show tonight, so I'm, I'm answering his question. Hey, Bitcoin Meister, can you talk more about how to be a digital nomad on your next Saturday show? Or are there old videos I can find answers for well first of all there are many old videos you can watch all of my beyond bitcoin shows uh they're all at disruptmeister.com they're real easy to find you scroll down it says beyond bitcoin number 121 number 120 this is the 122nd time uh i've done a beyond bitcoin show so many of the shows i talk about my lifestyle which you can classify as a digital nomad i do not live anywhere. I just go from one Airbnb to another. Sometimes I make friends with the people who own the Airbnb. So I rent from them directly. I get rid of the whole Airbnb thing. I have some favorite places, Los Angeles. Uh, I've made friends along the way. So th there's a tip for you. Here's, here's your tip of the day. Okay. Let the prices guide you on where to go. Okay. Right now on Airbnb, there are a lot of everything's, everybody's lowered their prices. And of course, it's because of government intervention. The government has shut down <laughs> uh, the travel and has scared people. And so uh, people aren't uh, don't think it's safe any longer because they believe what the government feeds them. So they're not. So that's very beneficial to people who are not scared, who who haven't bought into this hysteria, like myself. I I continue to my life hasn't changed. I so I'm getting great deals, dudes. Uh, but. So you, you, what you want to do is you want to look for a place. Uh, you, let's say you don't want to go in. Let's say you're living in the current time where you can't leave the United States. International travel out of the question right now. You you pick some places in the United States you've never been to before. You look and you see which which places are the cheapest. There's some third tier cities, uh, Spokane, Bo Boise, here in Asheville. You're getting some good deals. All right. There are some good deals. Nothing wrong with a third tier, -tier city. Uh, in the United States or second tier or fourth tier, whatever you want to say, uh, less chance of uh, civil unrest. All right. So what are some other, what other tips? Uh, well, first of all, possessions are an attack vector. Get rid of those possessions, dude. I don't own a car. Okay. 
So that means I don't have to pay car insurance on my car. Okay. Because I don't have a car. I don't drive. That's it. I mean, I don't have a house, so I don't have house insurance. All right. That, that's a bigger, that's a much bigger insurance cost right there. Uh, and there's so much maintenance on a house. So get rid of your attack vectors right there. I don't have kids. I don't have a wife. I mean, you can do this when you're uh, 23 years old. I don't know how old you are, Tower Comics, but uh, they, 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 I, I'd advise you uh, try to become a digital nomad at, at, at a young point, a very young, as young as possible as you possibly can. Uh, and now, why go to college? I'm going to talk about in a second how Johns Hopkins, which is very expensive, it's going to be uh, online learning this year. <laughs> you want to? If you got accepted that fifty thousand dollar a year school. Uh, I wouldn't, uh, I would say, okay, dudes, I'm taking a year off. I'm becoming a digital nomad like Meister. Okay. Now, some of you are saying, well, how do, how do I make money? Well, okay. Then you've got another option. You could save for a while. You could, you know, save until you're 26 years old and then get rid of your house, get rid of your possessions. And, and, and I mean, it, it, for me, it's easy to save. I don't go out to eat. I mean, I, I really haven't paid to go out to eat. Since uh, 2011, well, yeah, it was 2011. Uh, so that, that's that saves you. So it, it's not about bringing in the money per se. It's about saving money. Okay, saving saving money can be a big thing. Uh, now, once international travel opens again, you know there there are some cheap places, Eastern Europe. My I, this Serbia, I want to go to Serbia so badly. Uh, I, I talked about Santiago, Chile, that was so inexpensive, and we're talking good places on Airbnb. Uh, you, know, you, you always want a place with good reviews. That, that, there's, there's, there's a tip right there. Look for good reviews. Don't go to a place that no one's ever gone to before, uh, and, uh, an, an apartment that no one's ever gone to before because it could be a scam. Uh, what else do we have here? So, and consider the United States is a bunch of different countries without borders. We, we Americans are lucky. It, it, it's sort of you can pretend that in, in this current situation, it's a bit is it. Each state is a little bit different, okay? I mean, I mean, you're staying in uh, Boise is a lot different than staying in LA, <laughs> which is a lot different than staying here in Asheville. There's a, a different climates, uh, and if you can deal with cold, you know, go to a cold place. Uh, it's, it's usually cheaper during the winter. To, I don't, I don't, I don't deal with cold. I don't need to deal with cold. I don't need to really save money anymore because I've I've saved an incredible amount of money, and I live in the Bitcoin overlay. But not everybody's in the Bitcoin overlay. Not everybody. Uh, listened to me in, in 2015 and bought a bunch of Bitcoin. I mean, I listened to myself, but not, not all of you did. Uh, all right. So, and uh, uh, just a, another way to make money out there. I mean, I'm going to talk about this in a future show, uh, but there, there are content creators like me. I mean, we need help. All right. We need help spreading the word about our, our content. Uh, we're always willing to, uh, I mean, I'd be willing to have someone re- use my videos and splice them up any way they want to make their own channel with my videos on it and get all the revenue from it. Okay. I mean, there are many content creators. I'm not one of them that aren't on steam it, that aren't on Hive, that aren't on these places you can make money from. And you can go to them and say, Hey, can I be your Hive guy? Can I be your steam? There's all, there's, there's sorts of, there's all sorts of creative ways where you can start businesses that are ba online based businesses. And I'll talk about it in a future video um, where you don't need to be in, you know, you don't have to be in one place. You can travel around the whole freaking world. That's my life. I my business is is doing this, and of course, I really don't need a business at all because I have saved an incredible amount of money. Uh, and I, I mean, I used to have a house. I sold the house. I I, I had two houses. I well, if I had I've had three properties, and I've sold them all. And uh, yeah, uh, and so I live off. Uh, a lot of it went to Bitcoin. <laughs> But but some of it I, I, I still live off of to this this very day, and this brings in you know this brings in some money too. Whatever. All right. So that there there there's some digital nomad stuff. Just remember, possess, don't have a dog. <laughs> there are people out there. I mean, if you have a dog, I bet I bet you're such a. <laughs> to me, it's pathetic. You spend more on your dog than I spend on myself. All right. So put that in perspective people. Oh, how? Because there, you spend more on your dog than I do on myself. There, these people like the, the gourmet dog food, this, that, and the other. Minimalist lifestyle. Okay, get your dog fan. Get, take it to the vet. You know how much it, it costs? An incredible amount of money. I don't. I don't even know. Um, all right. So that's enough of that digital nomad stuff. I mean, I've talked about this stuff in other videos. It's fun. I mean, you can set up some consultation with me if you want to. Uh, you got to pay me for that, of course. 
<laughs> but but in Bitcoin, of course. Uh, and uh, I can I can explain more. Okay. Uh, hi from LA says Hope. Dude, I hope everything is uh, cool in LA. You know I love LA, and the best neighborhood in LA is of course Fairfax, off of La Brea, just south of Santa Monica Boulevard. That's where my people are at. I love it. I love it, and I uh, I do think about it a lot. I I become you know it's it's it, it's pretty easy to call yourself an LA person because most people from LA aren't from LA. Uh, I mean I'm I'm a Baltimore person, obviously that's where I'm from, but uh, almost my second home is LA because I, I guarantee you, I know those streets, not the highways. I know those streets more th better than most people in LA do because I run. And I, I mean, I, I go on public, I've gone on public transportation in the past, not that much the last few times, but I, I know that neighborhood. I know East L, um, East Hollywood. Um, so I, I do LA is a unique beast. It's got its problems. It definitely has its problems. But when you're in a in a real neighborhood in the center of LA like that, it's pretty awesome. I mean, it's it's an, it's an experience. And if you're not in the entertainment industry and you can just laugh at those people and you can just laugh at all the fakeness out there, it's awesome. I mean, it's like a freak show. Uh, but it is sad uh, that the government has shut down that that freak show aspect of it. You I mean? Even the entertainment people can't work right now. I mean, a certain amount of vibe is missing from L.A. now, and, and that's uh, unfortunate. But you made me go on a little – you made me think of L.A. L of all the big – so we got four. We got four big cities in the United States, right? New York, Chicago, L.A., and Houston, okay? Which one are you more drawn to of those four? And by far, I say L.A. L.A. is my, is my big city in the United States. By far, no doubt about it. Most people from Baltimore would say New York, New York, New York this, New York that. No, 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 no. I've spent plenty of time in New York. Um, I haven't spent that much time in Houston or Chicago, but I know LA is, I'm a unique beast. LA, unique beast. All right. And Hope says the suburbs. No, I'm not down with those. Uh, I'm not down with going to Pasadena or the Valley. Or And they're cool people in Pasadena and the Valley and North Hollywood and all that. No, that's... That's not the L.A. I like. I like the gritty center L.A., Fairfax, where we have a riot and everything. Uh, no, Ho Holly, East Hollywood. <laughs> I mean, downtown L.A. can be I mean, Skid Row, whatever. All right, enough. Enough L.A. talk from this uh, Baltimore guy. <laughs> Pound that like button, people. All right, this is truly beyond Bitcoin. Uh, and uh, L.A. is, exp is usually... Uh, here's another tip for the digital nomads. Uh, California is expensive for Airbnb. There are all these extra taxes, so you want to probably avoid California. <laughs> San Diego was – I mean, now things are cheaper. Uh, but but the other cities are even cheaper than that still because still they have all those ridiculous taxes in California. I love Boise. I like – Spokane is fun. And here – I got a good deal here in Asheville. It's probably going up in price here in Asheville though. Uh, all right, so – Let's think about this for a second. Uh, and again, you could play this at 2x, play this at 2x, people, to get through some of this stuff. As I know not everybody likes all the rants here. Uh, there's good stuff. We're, get, we're gonna get to George Floyd and all sorts of uh, current event stuff in a second. Americans uh, for months now have been, uh, I mean, virtually enslaved here, okay? If, if you buy into it all, if you listen to the government, if you, if you wear the mask, et cetera. And all these rules and regulations and fear that the politicians are, are piling on everyone, and the media is. I'm going to ask you a question here. It, for some of them, is it just, are they thinking, you know what, I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know a darn thing about this virus. All I want is to make sure that all, as many elections as possible can be mail-in uh, elections and where we send uh, ballots to every single address so that some of them just lay in hallways and so that we can uh, – so there can be massive uh, voter fraud. Is, is it that important to certain to, – to people out there to, that they lie and they don't even know what's going on with this virus? They don't care that they're enslaving Americans and Americans are losing jobs and becoming more and more and more government dependent. Is, it, is voting – do they value their wealth in who's president? to a point where they're they're willing to just continue this charade because that's all it is now 
this mass panic, because I mean, th there's a real virus out there, but it's not that serious for healthy people. Okay. There's really easy things you can do if you're old or sick uh, or, or you're scared. You, you can hide if you want to. I mean, you don't, you don't have to enslave the entire population. Okay. Now they're, they're doing that in Australia still. Now, obviously what they're doing it, it, or they're, they're clearly not doing it in Australia for, for this reason. I, I mean, I, I, uh, who knows <laughs> why, but, but I'm just asking you, are there some, are there some politicians that you could point to that are just clearly doing this just to get to the point where all the ballots are sent out by mail so that there are a bunch of them laying around. And so massive fraud can be, uh, committed. And so that, uh, the president, the president won't be president anymore. Is it that, is it, it, it so those people are sociopaths. All right, those people are sickening people. They, it's not that big of a deal who the darn president is, okay? What is a big deal is people losing their jobs and becoming government dependents. You're willing to, to ruin millions of people's lives? And this is what, and that's what it is. It, when someone loses their job and becomes a government dependent, they might get on drugs, they might kill themselves, all these horrible things. You're willing to, to ruin people's lives, to create this fear over a virus so that your candidate, can, you live through other people that much. Now, now some of the politicians that are doing this obviously think they're going to get a piece of the pie. They're going to, you know, if, if Biden becomes president, maybe he'll give them some, uh, some benefits of some sort. I don't know. But, th but think about that. Think, think how sick that is, that there, there probably are plenty of people out there that are just, they know this is overblown, but they just want to get to election day and to get it as corrupt as possible. It's just, it's sickening. It's not that big of a deal. Who the president is? They you valuing voting that much? It's voting isn't. <laughs> somebody think voting is like, and angelic. It, it's like so. It's holy. They think it's holy. It's not holy. It doesn't even make that big of a darn difference for God's sakes. All right, pound that like button. So speaking about the virus, there's a they're about to do a test. Clinical trial says uh, the the effects of quercetin. Uh, as a uh, prophylaxis and treatment of the virus. So what is quercetin? Quer quer quercetin anyway. Uh, and, and I've been talking about natural nutrition all along here. Okay, before there was a virus, I tell people, you know, don't worry about a doctor prescribing you drugs and stuff. Learn about what nutrition is, okay? Learn how to take care of yourself. Uh, but here we go. Quercetin, quercetin is a plant pigment flavonoid. It is found in many plants and foods, such as red wine, onions, <clears throat> green tea, apples, berries, ginkgo, bilboa, uh, St. John's wort, American elder, and others. All right. People use quercetin as a medicine, it says. So here we go. I, I have been showing you onions for years now. Wouldn't it be funny? You know, me eating, I, be, I eat, basically eat an onion a day. I eat, I, I straight and eat them like a fruit, okay? That's how used to these things I am, okay? Now, sometimes they burn, the purple ones burn, but I can deal with it, okay? I love mixing them with avocado and all, with, with the chicken, with the meat, with the everything. So I'm not saying, I, I it would be great if this quercetin uh, works to, to stop the virus, to, to, to cure people. I don't know what it's going to do, okay? But all I know is that if you're healthy to begin with, you, you've probably been eating onions. You've been eating this stuff instead of Starburst all the time. The people eating Starburst their whole darn lives and drinking beer and doing who knows, shooting up who knows what. They're the ones, yeah, they probably should be worried. They should be worried about a flu also. They should be worried about getting anything. When you're obese, when you're, when you're sick, you're sick, okay? When you, when you, when you don't have proper nutrition, you are ill. You are disgusting. I mean, you, you brought it on yourself. It's personal responsibility. So you can die from freaking anything. But the thing is, the people that have been eating the onions all this time, none of you should be really worried, okay, if, if, if you're healthy and thin and, and everything. So, God Almighty, I hope this is uh, the cure or it helps people or whatever. And I'm glad people are researching this. Do you hear about that on the news? No, you don't hear about it on the news. On the news, they make it seem like it's out of, out of a movie. Out of a, you know, we were talking about Hollywood before. They make it seem like this is out of one of those horror movies you know, 40 days or whatever, where there was some mass, uh, everyone dies of, of some uh, virus, some Will Smith movie with a dog. <laughs> I think I saw that on the plane once. I am legend, right? Um, no, uh, no, Will Smith, it, it, it's not just going to be Will Smith who survives this. Everyone, okay, mo most people survive this darn thing. 
Uh, so, but people want to have a new 9-11. People want to have a new a virus horror movie. This is a so for some just negative people. This is a big thing. This is a big event for them. So they can they can show how uh, virtuous they are and scream at people for not wearing masks and not being part of the herd, not being unified. Nothing wrong with being unified. Nothing wrong with not being unified. Excuse me. Okay, the debate is a great thing. Different opinions are a great thing. But in the, you know in cancel culture, you can't have a different opinion. That's it. We all have to be unified behind the flag, behind the this. Just like the, the dictators of the past, as Doug Casey pointed out. All right, so good luck to the study. And as I said before, there's in Melbourne, Australia, the lockdown is more insane than ever. Um, and like, it's only a few old people who have died. I, I don't know. It, it's a shame. Australia, M Melbourne is beautiful. Sydney is beautiful. I love Australia. It, it's, uh, I don't know. They, 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 they're in a panic prison, the mindset there. I, I, I don't know why they've taken it this far and taken away people's freedom and they're throwing women on the ground that break the curfew. It's, it's just some of the scenes are ridiculous. Uh, there is a, a site called Tes Teslarati. <laughs> and it's all, it's all about Elon Musk's uh, creations. It's news about his boring company, about Tesla, about him, about SpaceX. So if you're fans of a dude like, that's in motion like that, if you're a fan of the golden age and want to hear about innovations, it's an interesting uh, site to check out. It is linked to below. Hang on. Let me see the questions. Uh, is a new bull run starting? Yeah, probably. It probably. I mean, yes, it, it's think of it this way, dude. Um, in 2021, we'll be in a bull run. Okay. So is this the, when did the 2017 one really begin? It really started. It, it never looked back starting on November the 1st of 2016. So the equivalent of that this year is September the 1st, 2020. So by September, for, I mean, we're basically almost there. So what's the difference if we go down a few, if we go back to 9,000 and then on September 1st, we're back on, at 12,000 and it never looks back. So yeah, I mean, pick your, pick your date. Uh, what's the difference? Are you going to, are you going to sell more? Now? Don't sell. <laughs> are you going to buy it doesn't matter. Do you buy now or do you buy on September 1st? I mean, when you look back on it, it's not going to make that big of a difference, dudes. Um, but we're the momentum has begun for, for Bitcoin, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, but but the big the big year is is 2021. Okay, the big jumps. Uh, you know, we're one day closer to an all time high. That it's that that day will probably be in 2021. Probably it could if it actually if it follows the pattern. Let, last time we. I think we got we broke that a thousand eleven hundred all time high in like January of 2017. So the equivalent of that would be November of this year. But we'll see, we'll see. It's, it's not that big of a deal uh, if it's January or November. I mean, you got to have a strong hand. If it's a big deal to you, uh, if there's a big difference between those two dates, I don't. I mean, you're kind of impulsive. If, there shouldn't be a big difference if you're a long term thinker. Anyway, thank you for the question. Keep on throwing them out there and do beyond one, beyond Bitcoin questions. We can, I mean, that was a good Bitcoin question. Moving on. Uh, so some people are calling this the Great Suppression, the, the economic period. You know, we've had great depressions. We've had great recessions. This is the Great Suppression because it is the government suppressing the economy. We wouldn't have this. People wouldn't have downturns in their personal economies if it were not for the uh, suppression of business by the various governments of the world. Of course, if you're in a Bitcoin overlay like me, or if you're, I mean, if you're a wealthy person, if you don't, if you're not in retail, if, you, if you're not in a lot of things, if you're not, if you're in a white collar job, a tech job, this really isn't affecting you. Um, it, it, I mean, it's it's sad you can't. It's not affecting you in terms of, of, of finances. It's the wealthier people that are doing better. And, and well, you know, the government, the government. The, the funny thing is, it's the poor people who believe the nonsense. They're more likely to believe the government and just say, "Oh, the government's doing the right thing. I'm on welfare now. It's all right. Uh, you know, I'm a dependent now." They're the ones that are being hurt the most. Okay, they're they're definitely the one. The ones that buy into this nonsense the most are the ones that are being hurt by it the most. Uh, and, and there are plenty of uh, there are plenty of people in the tech world, of course, that are that are also you know mask lovers and, and, and whatnot. But it's it's just it's just a fact of uh, the way everything is set up right now. 
I mean, if you can't work at your uh, movie theater anymore, you weren't making a lot at the, that movie theater to begin with. And, and no, you're not. The, no, are any movie theaters open? No. So everybody that worked in a movie theater is freaking out of a job now. Uh, and that, those are generally lower. I mean, I, it's a shame. It's a shame. They, they, they thought they had stable jobs. They, people are now re- rethinking what is a stable job. You know, now that the fascism has taken over America, where they pick and choose winners. But most likely, if you're in a tech-related job, a high-paying job, you're one of the people that has been picked as a winner. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I've, you know, during this entire period, I have I have become wealthier because I have gotten I've acquired more Bitcoin dur- during this whole situation. So, what can I say? That's uh, try to get yourselves into the Bitcoin <laughs> overlay now and, and work for yourself. Get make it a, a, get into a business. And this is hard to do, obviously, but where you're not, where you can't be affected by a government shutdown. Now, now you know what a government uh, shutdown does of the economy. Uh, I mean, if, if you're a YouTuber, uh, yeah, you're, you're not really, you're probably doing better. If you're like a hardcore, you know, one of those YouTubers that just does the nonsense kid stuff, they're probably making more money than ever because people are stuck at home watching them, picking their noses, pound that like button, being slaves of the algorithm. Now, uh, so Johns Hopkins University, as I said before, um, is uh, they've, they're in Baltimore. And so, uh, yeah, they're online only. They're going to be online only. And it, it costs like $50,000 a year to go there. Uh, no, that's don't play that game. Now, so many of those ki- kids are such C-U-C-Ks today that most of them are going to take it. OK, I really respect the kids that are like, whoa, wait a second, I'm not doing this. I'm going my own way. But it's hard. Most kids, you know, when you're 18 years old, 17 years, 19, 20, whatever it is, um, they're part of the herd. They want to fit in. So I'll just do it for a year. I'll, I'll stay with mom and dad and pretend I'm in a, I'm pre- I'll pretend I'm in Charles Village in Baltimore. <laughs> no, there's no, there's no pretend there, dude. Either, either you're in Charles Village in Baltimore and where Johns Hopkins is or you're not, okay? And by the way, for the kids that go to Johns Hopkins, you don't. You might think you're cool going down the Green Mount Avenue and everything. If, if you're not used to being in a city, you're going to get mugged. <laughs> I warn you. I I've told this story before, but um, I I used to bank around there, and uh, the the tellers would tell me like always in August and September there'd be so many Hopkins kids coming to the bank saying you know they got mugged they lost their they lost their cards. They lost their uh, ATM cards and they need a new – every year it would be the same thing over and over. Because, you know, you get drunk at Hopkins. You walk – there. The, people are preying on you around there. I mean, Baltimore is pretty hardcore, man. Baltimore is – so, I mean, you stay in the Hopkins bubble, you're fine. But you get go off and the further you go off and, and you don't know it. I know it. I know what to avoid. I mean, it takes a while to master those neighborhoods around Johns Hopkins. Okay. And you better believe I'm, I'm a freaking master of those neighborhoods. There are few, there are few that, that know it like I do. And you, you mean, you could, if you're some 20 year kid, it, it's, it's doubtful you're going to be able to learn, uh, especially in these politically correct times. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. And if some of you that are watching this that are in different countries, you would be shocked. You, you would be shocked at, uh, how quickly Baltimore goes down the tubes <laughs> as you get further east of, of Johns Hopkins, uh, southeast of Johns Hopkins, especially. Um, all right. So, uh, so yeah, this date, speaking of, uh, sp- speaking of Baltimore, I, I, August 8th, I, I've told, I've also told this story before. Um, I got so, I, I it's, a, it's a fond memory of mine. This is easy to remember, 8, 8, August 8th. When I was a, a, a party animal <laughs> and I lived on Linden Avenue in Reservoir Hill, which is, a, is not a good neighborhood either. But um, and that's how you save money, too. Uh, now, I wouldn't recommend in, in this day and age, you know, buying a house in a bad neighborhood and fixing it up with a bunch of other people. It, it might be a little riskier than it was before. Who knows? Um, but I saved a lot of money doing that. I'll tell you that uh, for all you uh, pre-digital nomads. Anyway, when I when I was living there. Um, on one August the eighth, it was so, it was a warm night. I got invited to two parties. So I drank so much wine, and I ended up vomiting so much purple on the street when I got back home. 
and and yeah, I, you, you shouldn't uh, travel the way I traveled that night, obviously. But when you're young, you do stupid things. Uh, um, so uh, it's just uh, I'll share that memory. I it, there were I failed to. Well, was I was I really hitting on that woman that night? I don't know. There, there was, there, my, one of my friends had quite an experience with a, a lady that night. I mean, there, it was I was valuing my wealth in women that night. To say the least, to say the least. So I, I have fond memories of uh, August the 8th. And uh, no, it's not cool to get that drunk and, and barf up purple and end up. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't do you. But young kids, you know, college age kids, they, they do that type of thing. So uh, it's, it's something I think about on this day uh, every every year. And it's a, in China, they love August the 8th. Eight, eight, all those eights. They love. They had the opening ceremonies of the Olympics on August eighth, uh, two thousand eight. Actually, uh, back in the day. All right, so that that's a little uh, smile on my face memory uh, from from back uh, Baltimore days. There was a lot of partying in Baltimore. A lot of partying. I did not vomit that often either. So that's why another reason I, I remember this. And definitely didn't used to vomit on the street or anything like that. So it was it was. There's a lot of wine consumed that night. Fun times. Uh, and I'd given up. I used to, before that, I used to drink beer. But um, it was my slow progression out of alcohol. You know, b- beer was the thing you drank in college. And then eventually I, I thought it was kind of disgusting. I never enjoyed the taste. You know, it would get me, uh, it would do the trick. Um, but wine was, uh, wine was a little bit better. So I thought, and then eventually nothing, nothing. I haven't had, I haven't had any alcohol since uh, 2014. All right. And I, I would advise people not to. Uh, there's really no reason to drink alcohol. I see no reason. Um, well, other than when people used to go to clubs and bars, which I guess they don't do anymore, it does make you socially – it gets rid of some of the edge. I mean you're able to hit on women easier. There's no doubt about it. You're able to hit on women easier. And I mean I can't lie and say that, it, that alcohol didn't help me get women. And I mean totally – get when i mean yeah there were times it, it, it helped i mean it helped me to yeah get the get, hit the home run as it as it were as it were but don't value your wealth in women dudes don't value your wealth in women you know and who knows what the long-term health consequences are I, I don't know what it did to the inside of my body i have no idea all right but i i do know that i don't do that stuff anymore <laughs> and again to all the people no i did not do i was only alcohol there was no drugs and no drugs. I tried drugs like a couple times here and there, but uh, no, like I've only tried drugs like three times or something. Yeah, two or two or three times or something like that. Uh, but and that was a long. That was like when I was cop in like twenty or something like that. Uh, all right, and that's not and that's not me endorsing. It was stupid. I, I regret even trying even trying drugs. Uh, all right, so uh, but everybody, you know, no one's perfect. Pound that like button. Oh, here we go. I, I almost forgot. So speaking about uh, the panic over the virus, some of these leaders thought it was a really cool idea. You know, they didn't want the prisoners getting this virus that isn't killing them or anything like that. So they let people out of jail. So there was one guy. Here's a, an article. He was accused of rape. They let him out of jail. And then he killed the woman that accused him of raping her. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Good. That, that, that people still trust the government after all this. That people still want the government to solve their problems. It, it's a, it's amazing. If you're a Democrat or a Republican, you can admit either you should be able to admit that no government has presented a solution. So they've only made things worse. Okay. You can hate Trump as much as you want, but how can you deny that the the Democratic governors haven't done horrible jobs too? They've all done it. It, leave it up to the, the market, leave it up to people to manage their own lives instead of having the government manage everything. It's been a disaster, but there's still people, it, it, despite a story like that, that'll be like, no, I want the government in charge of this. Please, government, tell me what to do. I mean, this should have been a big wake. For some people, this was a big, up, big wake up call. But I'm telling you, there's a substantial amount of people that are more subservient to the government than ever. I guess it's just out of pure fear. So the media defined narrative, okay? It's, it's the media defines the narrative. All right. They decide what is popular. Uh, if people ignored the media totally, I mean, we would not have this panic. People are hooked on the media. 
They are hooked on it. All right. There's so many different stories out there. If you do your own research, you can find out so many different things that are going on in this world. But most people just listen and regurgitate with the, the media is covering a virus, but you can totally ignore it if you wanted to. If you're a healthy person, well, what's the deal? You know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, you're fine. And I mean, if you go back to 1968, 69, during that flu, the media did ignore that flu and life went on. Okay. Uh, so it, it's amazing how people buy into this narrative. People are hooked on what the they do not think. They do not think. And that's why I like a guy like Yaron Brook. I don't agree with him all the time, but he encourages people to think, to think. That's what uh, Ayn Rand was supposedly telling getting people to think. People don't use this thing, okay? People do not use this. There's a powerful tool up there. In the, I'm pointing to my brain for the people who are uh, – and your brain is – everybody's brain is a very powerful tool that so many people do not use now because it's easy it, now more than ever. Because of this comfortable society we live in with all the technology, it is so easy to not think. Let the TV tell you what's uh, going on. Let the algorithm tell you what to watch on YouTube. It's so easy. It's so easy. But don't – it's it's not that hard to use your brain and take that extra step and click on the link below or ignore what the TV says. Not I don't watch TV at all. I don't have a TV. You know, The place came with a TV. I haven't turned this TV on once. Moving on, pound that like button, first of all, and uh, go to disruptmeister.com. We're 36 minutes in. Again, people, you can fast forward through this. If you want play the 2X, jump around. There's good stuff for everybody in this. And I, I have no I have no time to like bookmark the space, you know, and say, say, you know, after the show, say, well, at, at this point, I talked about this. This is why, you know, if you're a, a, go, a go-getter out there, you find somebody like me and you say, okay, I'll help you and I'll, I'll get part of the, you know, I'll spread the word for you. And, and I would gladly give people, uh, you know, part of the, the, the revenue that comes in from this stuff for, for making it better. That's how you become a digital nomad. You, you, there are so many creators like me that don't have the t- time. I mean, it's not worth my while to, to, to make this, to make this video better, to make it uh, fancy sets and graphics. But there are a lot of people out there that could do it for me. And, uh, you know, the, they could do it for so many people. I mean, I'm, I'm, I just gave people an, a job for an idea, an idea for a job. And uh, I actually will, uh, as, as I said, I'll talk about the uh, job ideas in, in a, a, future, a future video. I see people are talking in the chat. All right, cool. Uh, now you can keep on asking questions. <laughs> oh, God. Someone said something interesting there. Uh, and uh, we talked, hey. Computing forever. This dude is awesome. I, I, I brought him uh, up before. He mentions in this video, this is a real thing. I think it's out of England that uh, someone, the, the, the people in the media, uh, there was a doctor they had on that suggested since women aren't getting the virus as much that they should, they should try estrogen on men, that men should try estrogen to see if, uh, to see if it protects them from the virus. And that they, there should be there should be trials. That there is a clinical trial, you know, giving men estrogen, and men are willingly taking it. Dudes, <laughs> this is the same media that says uh, the malaria pill HCQ is going to kill you, okay? Which has been used for you know a hundred years. Uh, estrogen is a very powerful drug. <laughs> All right, you will get man boobs. <laughs> no, it's not worth it for a healthy man to take estrogen. <laughs> It's like it's so ridiculous how people are not thinking. The media goes crazy over hydroxychloroquine, and then they have pieces saying that men should take estrogen. It's absolute, and this is the eighty percent of the world we live in. So the the New York Attorney General, I, I'm just going. You watch his video. You watch Dave Cullen's freaking video. It's linked to below. The the NRA, the National Rifle Association. Uh, earlier this week, the New York Attorney General, the woman, I, she's tried to sue like Bitfinex before. All the, you know, she, she's 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 does she doesn't mind her own business. She's got to help the people by suing companies that have nothing to do with her state. All right, but she she thought it would be cool to sue the. She's trying to put the National Rifle Association out of business. She's straight up picking on them. She's admitting she's going. It's, it's political. So she she made an announcement. She's trying to sue the NRA to put them out of business. 
And I thought, oh, you know, that's a really odd move. <laughs> it's a fascist move because you're picking losers and winners again. <laughs> you know, there's so many different corrupt organizations out there that they could go. But she wasn't going after an NRA. Okay, you're going after. But the, the, the story broke. And then 24 hours, they weren't talking about it anymore. Now, why is this? Well, it's probably because what I thought, I'm like, why is she doing this? This is going to get so many NRA fans that maybe wouldn't vote out to vote. Now, who do they support? They're not going to support uh, the, the, the people who support uh, the New York Attorney General. I'm going to tell you that. So maybe that's why the, the media dropped the story. They're not really talking about it anymore because guess what? If they talk about it, it helps Trump. That, that's, a, that's a simpler way of explaining it. This is this is type of something that backfires on. She's a hater. She has said herself she wants to bring down a Donald Trump. What is this? Is this a third world country? I mean, it basically is. That, that it's, it's, a, it's a third world statement. Uh, I mean, that, that's not how that's not how uh, uh, sophisticated, civilized countries uh, uh, act. Okay, you, you don't you don't uh, try to. Uh, so you frame your political opponents and and pick on them uh, legally. Uh, it's uh, you don't use the law, the your legal authority to get political revenge on people. <laughs> that that's something that again you, that, that's something for Zimbabwe basically. Uh, and no offense to Zimbabwe, but you know, you, I mean, all the Zimbabweans know it's it's totally uh, off the hook there. The kind of corruption they have. Uh, but it is, it, is, it is a beautiful country in some aspects of it, De definitely. I, I had I was there. Oh, yeah, I've been there. Pound that like button. Check out the archives at disruptmeister.com for 2016. You can see me in Harare uh, in November of uh, 2016. I was there. So the governor of Maryland, his name is Larry Hogan. He's a, uh, a rhino, basically, Republican in name, in name only. Or they call him that. Uh, he, he's just a to, – to, to win in, in a, a Democratic state, I mean, you've got to – he kind of basically stand for nothing, I guess. And he doesn't stand for much. He was on the Dave Rubin show. You can, you can watch him on there. It is so obvious what he's doing. He's getting on as many shows as possible. And I give him credit for this. He's really prepping for the 2024 presidential election. He's starting early. He's been on a lot of shows. He doesn't care how small they are, how big they are, whatever. And he just says the same talking points and they're the tested and true talking points over. I'm a unifier. I'm this. I'm that. It's so boring. Um, and yeah, he at first he he was not cool about this virus. He has let uh, the state go back to work, and he did do uh, Montgomery County in uh, the state of Maryland tried to make it illegal for any school to be open, including private schools, and he says no, you can't do that. So that was a good thing that he did. But generally, he's a milk toast uh, type of guy. And it, when we had the riots in Baltimore in 2015, he did a pretty good job with that. And he brings that up over and over again. And uh, yeah, you can watch him on Dave Rubin. You can see his milk toastness. And uh, that he, this is an example of a man who just wants more power. He wants to be president of the United States in 2024. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. And uh, so here is from Sweden. There's an article about how things have worked out very well in Sweden uh, with the virus. But I love this quote from the, the comment section. The broad masses, as I've taken to calling them, are actually far more frightened of losing their unconditional trust in mother and father, the government and the media than they are of the virus. Just like real mothers and fathers, government and media can lie, steal, cheat, and even kill without losing the trust of their children. Of course, the broad masses no are no longer children, but shh, government and media haven't told them. Oh, pound that like button. I like that comparison. Government, government and media are the mothers and fathers of all these people who haven't grown up, who are government dependents, and... Perhaps they are more scared of, of seeing that, you know what, my mom and my dad, the government and the media aren't as truthful as I thought they were. I can't accept that this whole thing was hysteria.
I, if they said it was real, if they said I should be scared, if my mother and father told me to be scared, then I should be scared. And that's how, how addicted it, it's just sad. And part of the reason this has happened is because there are fathers out there that aren't true fathers anymore and, and mothers that aren't true mothers anymore. So kids have grown up with the TV as their parents, with the government. They're taught in school how the government is right. The government is doesn't lie. The government's so great. And this is what we end up with. Good comment there. Good commenter up there from Sweden. Sweden has done well. A new poll finds that the average American thinks 9% of the U.S. population has died from coronavirus. That's 30 million people. The actual number is 160,000. Gee, I wonder why everyone is so hysterical. That's from uh, Paul Joseph Watson. Uh, yeah. Americans aren't really good with numbers. Most people aren't very good with numbers. But uh, you, you get the point. If they say, if the average American thinks 9% have, have died of the virus, that means there, there are a bunch of Americans that think it's even higher than that, okay? That people have become, the media, their, their addiction to the media has blinded them so much that they think millions have died. Millions have died. When it's, uh, it's 160,000. And dude, there are 330 million Americans, maybe more. Uh, lots of people die every day, all right? Life, life is dangerous. Life is dangerous, dudes. In the end of the day, in the end of the year, it, how many more people will have died than normal? And uh, we'll, we'll see because a lot of the people would have died anyway. A lot of them were 90 years old. They were going to get hit by something, whether it be the flu, whether it be whatever. Um, it's just life. Here is an old but good uh, – this is from last year actually. But it just shows you uh, about wealth inequality and resentment versus gratitude, okay? And the abundance we have in the United States of America. But there's so many people that are just jealous and have resentment of the rich. They don't understand the abundance uh, and the good life that is being provided in the United States, even when you're on freaking welfare. A study by Just Facts has discovered that after accounting for all income, charity, and non-cash welfare benefits like subsidized housing and food stamps, the poorest 20% of Americans consume more goods and services than the national averages for all people in most affluent countries. This includes the majority of countries in the prestigious Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, including its European members. In other words, if the U.S. poor were a nation, it would be one of the world's richest. <laughs> and yet, the and these are the people that say how horrible their lives are. <laughs> and it, it sucks that a lot of their jobs were taken away, but a lot of them didn't have jobs to begin with in the bottom of the 20%. And, and these people, these welfare moms, they, they, they are wealthier than so many people in, in European countries just from the benefits they get. Yet they, they want more, more, every more. It's never, never enough, never enough because it's envy. They don't, they don't really care about their. They just compare themselves to the other people. They compare themselves to Bill Gates. They compare themselves to the people on TV. They don't understand about better. They have no idea how to better themselves. They just are envious. There's resentment. Total. When you are filled with resentment, you're never going to accomplish anything. They should have gratitude that they live in such a wealthy country. They have such an easy base to start with. Okay. When you're that rich compared to the rest of the world, you got a good start. You got a good head start. Uh, to, 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 and there's so much freedom in this country when there's not a virus going on. By the way, I saw the bear outside again <laughs> at 6:45 in the morning. I, 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 this is the second time now. There was a bear in the like coming from. It was a little bear, but it was a bear. They have bears here in uh, in Asheville, North Carolina. American Hoddle said. Life is a, is a choose your own adventure game where 99% of people refuse to choose. I thought that was a good. Uh, <laughs> Life is a choose your own adventure game where 99% of people refuse to choose. Yeah, most people do not want to take their own adventures. Let, oh man, life is great, dude. When you're a unique beast and you just plan it out for yourself, digital nomad, whatever you want to call yourself, when you don't fit in with the herd, when, when you don't blindly unify behind uh, whatever's popular, fitting in is overrated. It is, but most people, they don't know the fitting in is overrated. They can't stand it. So, so many people don't end up living uh, the rich, full lives they can really live. That gives us more opportunity. If they're if they're passing up on opportunities, more opportunity for us. 
Uh, Eric Voorhees tweeted this day out. A single percent of New York's population pays half of the state's taxes. <laughs> uh, and they're the most mobile pe people on the globe. So uh, Governor Cuomo was a little worried about that. And then um, most of the New York rich are pretty loyal, I think, and just love being tax slaves. But there gets there's a point if you're having riots all the time. And I'm not saying they're having riots all the time there, but if things are getting dangerous, more dangerous in Manhattan and, and certain places, they're going to they're going to be fed up. And <laughs> it it's again, we have so many envious people of the wealthy out there. But if it weren't for these wealthy people in New York, there would be no New York. I mean, a single percent of New York's population pays half the state's taxes. And how much of those taxes are being redistributed to poor people to just live their lives? So I encourage the people of New York to leave. <laughs> let, let, them, let them try to uh, go gulp. Totally go gulp, man. It, it's it, Because oh, the taxes are only going up on you. You don't have to be a tax slave in New York. You don't have to live in New York. You don't have to... You don't have to have real estate as your asset either, or you can have Bitcoin as your asset, dude. Get some Bitcoin, go live wherever the heck you want to live, and, or go from place to place like I do constantly. Uh, yeah, this week at Bitcoin was great. We had uh, Surfer Jim, who is going to leave New York soon, and uh, Reed, we're on. Uh, the, the mainstream media is ignoring that new George Floyd video that came out. It shows before they were stepping on his neck uh, what was going on. And it was clear that he was uh, high on drugs. There's, there's no doubt about it. And he probably was having a heart attack already. Uh, he, he was definitely having some trouble. He was so messed up on drugs that he was clearly having an, an effect on his uh, – he wasn't a healthy dude. I mean you can see. Mentally he was losing it from being on vicious drugs. But, I mean, you keep on getting on drugs like that, it's going to rip your body apart too. And, I mean, it doesn't give the right of dudes to stand on your neck. No. That, 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 uh, but – um, they would the, the police officers were probably overcharged. Uh, second degree murder is like intent, like they had intent to, to kill him beforehand. I mean, they were telling him the late he wanted to lay down on the ground and said at one point, he, I mean, they, well, yeah, I, I think it's gonna if, if they get if they're still charged with second degree murder, they're gonna be found innocent of that. Um, but they, they, they should charge them of something else that they actually definitely did. All right. Um, and, uh, that's up to, I mean, I, I'm no, a legal expert, you know, to see what they definitely did, but this second video, which, uh, and the media is not talking about it at all. It's, it's on, I mean, Fox news has something on it. Uh, T Tucker Carlson mentioned it, I think, but it's, it's pretty bad video. Um, it's, I mean, the guy was no saint to say the least. Uh, you, you could see that, that, that there were some issues that, that, that definitely. Uh, and so it, it also is uh, like the whole racial aspect of it is kind of eliminated when you see this. Like he was a junkie, like losing his freaking mind. And like what do you, it's a tough it's a tough job to do when you're a cop and you've got somebody that's all over the place that's panic stricken and. Uh, is saying he's going to lay on the ground, saying this. Hey, it was claustrophobic, he said, and he didn't want to be in a car. And it's a, you know, when dudes are on drugs, they say so many different things. It, drug addicts are really difficult to deal with. Try to avoid, I mean, that, that's one of the reasons I enjoy not being in Baltimore is I'm not around drug addicts anymore. <laughs> you know, anytime you go running in Baltimore, you always, uh, it seems like I always encounter something. All right. So Carl Denninger is still right over at uh, at Market Ticker, uh, he talks about you know we worship the healthcare workers. The healthcare workers were the ones spreading this uh, this virus. No, I mean it's not like they were doing it on purpose, but there was a better way to deal with the healthcare workers instead of shutting down uh, you know people that worked in retail and in bars. They could have said, you know what, healthcare workers, you're essential workers, but Perhaps you shouldn't be uh, going everywhere, and maybe we should set up, a, you know, let you stay at the hospital overnight and live there, and we'll pay you a lot more instead of bringing it back into the general population. I mean, he, he 
it Denninger is got it's it's got a, he's got a good post about it and uh, it's it's he's been right all along uh, the way that it's transmitted who it affects uh, I want to say that the Sturgis bike uh, motorcycle rally is going on in Sturgis South Dakota now I drove around South Dakota in 2015 I didn't I made it to Mount Rushmore but I didn't make it to Sturgis so I, I don't know uh, it's a little it, usually it's just a little town but Hundreds of thousands, usually, of bikers, guys on motorcycles, Har Harleys, dudes, like those hardcore dudes. They come to Sturges this time of the year, and they didn't they didn't cancel this event. So there are all these people over Twitter say, "Oh, it's so horrible! They're you know, oh, they're all going to die." They're all no, they're not going to die, dude. All right, so many people think that you die if if you get it, you die. Percentage wise, so few people die from it. They get it, okay. And healthy people that get it, so few people die. So I, I so support and love that these bikers are still having their event in Sturges. Major League Baseball should let people back into the stadiums. Every It's just the, the, the limitations on the regular population. The quarantining of the healthy is so ridiculous, is so fascist, is so wrong. And I'm so proud that I, from the very beginning, I've been speaking up against this, and I have not complied. And I've been outside every single freaking day. I don't run with a freaking mask on or anything. And I speak up against this. You, everyone, should speak up against this. You only have one life, and you you'll regret if you didn't speak your mind uh, one day. Okay, we we you can still darn speak your mind. Be a unique beast. Uh, all right. So, and uh, Hope said, appreciate your dedication. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad. New show every day, baby. It's conviction. It's conviction. And everyone has a certain level of conviction. I'm, I'm balls to the wall about the freaking conviction these days. All right. And I love that the dudes and Sturges are doing their thing. And some people are joking like, well, Antifa, the Antifa is supposedly going to go up to Sturges. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I wouldn't advise uh, anyone starting with those dudes on their freaking bikes. <laughs> uh, all right. Now, uh, we talked about Sturges. We talked about Denninger. Oh, God, so much. John Solomon, is that his name? Nearly 60% of voters say government should break up or take other actions against social media giants. Wow. Dudes. Government should break up social media giants. I mean that—that's fascism. That's picking winners and losers right there. I do. I'm not one of those people. Guys, compete, don't complain. I know. I I haven't had a good time with YouTube. Sometimes they shut down my main channel. An algorithm shut down. My, but there's bitch shoot. There's competitors. There's okay. So they don't have a monopoly. There's, the government doesn't have a right to go into a private business. And say, you know, how you're going to run your business. Now, they've done that during this virus. So you can see why 60% of voters say the government should break up. Because they're seeing the government pick winners and losers. So why not pick winners and losers in big tech also? But Yaron Brook has a, a video ripping on the antitrust hearing that the government had. And about how these guys, it, it's basically the, these men have too much success for the government. Zuckerberg, uh you know, and, and, and Cook with the guy Amazon, uh, Bezos, they're too successful. People are, are, are envious of them. And they know that uh, since they have, you know, you can, you can have too much success. So the pe people are envious. People aren't appreciative of what these people have brought to the world because they brought so much convenience to the world. And so the congressmen who produce nothing have a rigged question and, ses a question and answer session with them. So just to get sound bites, okay? And Yaron Brook said, he said, these four leaders should have refused to play this game, okay? They shouldn't have even showed up. Or if they showed, if they showed up, they should have started yelling at the congressman. But they're, they're all CUCKs on a certain level. Unfortunate. Um, he called the, uh, Yaron Brook called it power-hungry status politicians versus heroic versus heroic big tech. Uh, last week, I forgot to mention this, but it's in Israel. They are developing a uh, test that uh, shows if you have cancer early on. It's an early detector of cancer test. This is a golden age, dudes. So while, while so many people are still panic-stricken and 
They want uh, vaccines for something that isn't going to kill them. There are people doing uh, beneficial medical research, life extension. That's life extension type of stuff. If you could detect cancer real super duper early, like that helps. All right. You can change people's diets. You can, you can do all sorts of things. By the way, ch check out Vention's uh, page. He's at a cancer treatment center in Mexico and he's, he's doing real well. Um, a natural, uh, natural uh, solution. So we'll see how that turns out. It, it's interesting to, to see what he's going through down there. Uh, now, uh, remember disruptmeister.com over 1700 Bitcoin videos I've been in and I will be in Salt Lake City from September 29th for two months. I think until November 24th. If you're around there, I'll be near you. Uh, Francis, Pull, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're still at, and not at the bit shoot. There's some big bit shoot news. We're going to get to in one second, guys, one second. Uh, Francis Polio sent this out. I can't believe not a single journalist has asked the Quebec government the obvious question. What are the metrics you are waiting for in order to end the emergency pandemic measures? Not sure how it is where you are from, but in Quebec, it's becoming obvious. It's indefinite. This is a simple, great question. What are the metrics that end the lockdown? No, no politician. It, it doesn't, Quebec, and the whole darn United States, the whole darn Canada, they can't answer it. When, when are we going to have to stop being locked down? When are we going to have to stop wearing masks? They don't have metrics. They don't have any, any – okay, when, when X percent of the population has it. They don't, they don't have an end game at all. They are just impulsive leaders that are trying to get votes, that are trying to get the people into a panic, to depend more on them, to blindly believe them, and to think that the government is helping. Think that the government is helping. Oh, I haven't even talked about Victor Davis. Oh, my God. This is going to be a long show. So – uh, I think it was Friday this happened. All of a sudden, bit shoot. If you had bit shoot, if you tried to post things on Twitter that were bit shoot links, they weren't letting you do it. They had banned bit shoot. Then it, they, they, people, a lot of people complained. Uh, but still, now if you post a bit shoot link and you click on it, it gives you a warning. It doesn't send you to the bit shoot site. So Basically, what Twitter is doing is it's helping uh, YouTube. <laughs> it's picking favorites. It's saying, okay, um, everything at this video site is spam. That's what they're saying. Everything at BitChute is spam and lies. So we're going to give you a warning. But YouTube, those, those are fine. So they, they know that there is stuff at BitChute that can't appear on YouTube. So they, they straight up said, I mean, this is pretty coordinated, okay? This is this is definitely coordinated, uh, the type of information that these guys want uh, people accessing through their platforms. Twitter does not want you. Uh, it's trying really hard, and I think it's virus-based, for you not to get alternative information that isn't part of the, the talking points of the, uh, of the herd. And they're willing to... <laughs> almost ban all bit shoot videos in order to do this. And that, that's pretty draconian right there. Okay. But they're a private company. They can do this. They, they're just not letting, they've uh, declared war against bit shoot. So what do you do? What do you do? Do you say, okay, government, you should uh, take over Twitter government. You should punish Twitter for this. Or are you going to actually be in motion and just go to bit shoot yourself and, and watch bit shoot videos? Okay. I mean, I, or are you going to post? Do you post on BitChute? Are you a creator? I post on BitChute every single day. So I'm on BitChute every single day. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not just talking the talk. I'm walking the walk. There are a lot of people. I mean, so, you know, I don't like what Twitter's doing at all. I think it's, I'm calling them out on that. I'm bringing it to everybody's attention. So if you want alternative views, if you if you want to hear about the high, the HCQ, uh, you, you go to Bitch, go to BitChute. You don't, don't rely on, uh, and you can still click on it. But it is scary when you get that warning from uh, Twitter. You think you're about to enter a, a site that has a virus. You don't want to – it's just a natural inclination if you're protecting your uh, computer safety not to click on something that says warning. I mean you immediately think it's a virus. So it will cut down on the views that BitChute gets, no doubt about it. And I'm surprised – I mean and, – and it's done on a Friday. So many of these bannings 
and weird things are done on a Friday because they know people aren't paying attention on Friday. The media is good. Not that the media would cover this anyway. The mainstream media will never cover a story. They love this. They, they probably think it's great. Oh, good. We can continue with our, uh, we won't be called out by all the people in bit you. All the people that we tried to throw over there. I mean, they're trying to purge the mainstream uh, platforms of the undesirables. And more and more people are becoming undesirable. Dude, Finnegan is overrated. Great, great. I don't care if I get purged from YouTube. We, you shouldn't treat BitChute as a place for the purge. You should go there regularly and check out what's over there. So more and more people feel comfortable over there. So an action like that isn't going to – compete, don't complain is what I say. There's YouTube is not a monopoly. It is not a monopoly, and uh, there are other – there, BitChute is, is a definitely an alternative. There are other alternatives out there. Use them. Use them. Get other people to use them. Compete. Don't complain. Defiance over compliance, baby. Defiance over compliance. What is this? Uh, I still haven't gotten the victor here. What is this? Uh, more than a third of Americans say they would not get a virus vaccine right now. Okay? Even if, the, if it were free and the FDA approved according to a new Gallup poll. So that gives me hope in, in uh, Americans. More than a third would not take that shot right now if it came out today, all right? And it, it should be more. I don't see how anyone in their right mind could take an untested uh, vaccine. But political party affiliations is the biggest difference maker. 81% of Democrats said they would get the vaccine. <laughs> well, less than half of Republicans, 47%, said they would get the vaccine. All right, I'll, I'll take a positive spin on this. At least 19% of Democrats are not insane. <laughs> How about that? It, it's not 100%. 19% is substantial. Uh, I, I just think it's so people believe the government. So, And I, I, I would like to believe that Republicans, if, if, it, if, it, if it, there was a Republican, uh, I, I don't know, it, it's, if the media was Republican biased, which it isn't, but if it was, because right now it's Democrat bias, and if, if, if they were calling, if they were make, trying to make the vaccines seem like the greatest thing since Swiss cheese, that uh, that Republicans wouldn't be 81 uh, percent for it. But yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't live in we don't live in that alternative universe. Uh, but I'll say this. OK, 19 percent of Democrats aren't willing to take this untested nonsense. It's a good start. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, more than a third of Americans said they would not take it. Good, good, if it came out today. Victor Davis Hanson, this dude is someone you need to follow on Twitter because he tweets out the latest. He doesn't have a YouTube channel, but he's been on a lot of people's YouTube channels lately. He does. He writes. I really like – I think he's a very smart guy. He points out that the riots um, and, and, and just that the BLM now, it, it's not to – some of this – I mean, it, it, it's sheer hatred and envy of of white people, and few people are, are willing to say that. Um, you know what? What some people are complaining about is like, you know, there's all this black racism out there against black people, and uh, what what a lot of this is coming from now, and it's coming from white people too, is just hatred of whites. And so you're complaining about hatred of blacks, but you're building a movement around hatred of whites and like the only, what is the end game of BLM? Is it to take, is it to enslave white people? Is it to kill white people? Is it to take away property of white people? What, I mean, this is a serious question, a, a very serious question to, for people who blindly join this herd of a movement and all these corporate people who are buying into it. What are you buying into? What is, what, what will be, again, what are the metrics? When is, when is the problem solved? When is the Black Lives Matter problem solved? Okay, what what numbers do we need? All right, is it that you need reparations? I mean, so that, for me, you know, the the, the United States uh, printing twenty trillion dollars worth of dollars of, of okay, that's fine. You know that that's not saying you know we have to kill a race or destroy or hurt a race or or or, or I mean, it's completely different. That's um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Oh God! I'm not, who knows? Uh, that's it's, it's total violence versus uh, financial uh, Armageddon. There, okay. 
Uh, so l- l- what, what is the, uh, what is the definition of, of the end, the end game here? So he, he but he straight up says like he, he, these movements are really radical. He also points out that if China and China is into destabilizing other countries, they now know the easiest way to destabilize the United States of America. Um, just to say, you know, in a couple of years, say, uh oh, we might have a new virus coming out of Wuhan and see that story all over the United States media. And they will, I mean, they will cause such panic in the United States. They see the key, the, what the, the, the majority of American citizens have uh, demonstrated how easily they can be manipulated and scared by stories. So China will remember this and other enemies of the United States, but China is the most powerful enemy of the United States. Um, the Chinese government versus the United States government. Chinese government is not a good government. And so, yeah, don't be surprised if they, if they, if they want to cause internal strife, that is a very easy way to do it. Just to say, Oh, uh Oh, we might have had a new bat virus here. Uh Oh, what's going on? Uh, okay. Force using force is what I wanted to say. Um, yeah. Violence and force is the, I couldn't, couldn't think of the term force for some sec, for some reason. Uh, that uh, pr- printing up, I, I don't consider uh, printing up $20 trillion force. Uh, it's just uh, ruination of the economy. It's, it's, I mean, you shouldn't value your wealth in dollars anyway. But what, what is, uh, what, what do these movements want to do in terms of forcing uh, forcing upon the uh, general population of the United States? It's a very good question. All right. So, uh, so human, the man going his own way, he's got a great uh, YouTube, and I link to it below. Don't waste your life is a video by human, uh, and and he, and he brings up what I said uh, before. Speak your mind now. Um, if you're in a bad situation, leave now. All right. Don't don't just wait. Don't think. Uh, oh, I'll do. I'll deal with it for a while. Fix it. Fix it. Long term thinking. Don't do any impulsive changes. Think it all out. I'm in a bad situation. How are you going to change your system? Make a plan. Be courageous. Do not be reckless. Be courageous. But just don't waste your life away. Don't waste your life away. Um, that doesn't mean to be impulsive. It means to be courageous. Plan it out. How are you going to fix it? How are you going to live the happiest life you can so you can speak your mind like me um, and just be have a healthy environment? Get out of that unhealthy environment as fast, fast and in a non-reckless, impulse, non-impulsive way as possible. So finally, City Lab, an estimated 27% of adults in the U.S. miss their rent or mortgage payment for July. That's probably going to be worse in August. So as I said before, um, in the Bitcoin overlay, my life hasn't changed. Uh, 27% of adults in America have missed their rent. That is not, not good. It's a domino effect. And it's a shame that so many of those people thought their jobs were secure and they were not secure. And so they were not, people were not as free as they thought they were, that the government could come in, change the rules, take away your job. Uh, So remember that. And it is amazing that more people than ever after all this are looking for the government to solve their problems. Dudes, get into the Bitcoin overlay Get out of that government solves my problem. I want the government to solve my problem mindset. Get out of that mindset now. Uh, because there, I, I just can't believe with all the lies and all the exaggerations, um, this is how dependent and mindless people have become. That they, they, they can't recognize what's, what's going on out there. Uh, that they still think the government is going to pr- produce a solution to their problems. Just get yourself into positions where you will not be at the, at the mercy of the government. It's it's hard to th- now that we've lived through these uh, interesting times. I think if you use your head, you can put yourself into that position. Become a digital nomad, work for yourself, uh, be totally internet based, have a lot of savings. Don't blow your money on on bars and partying. Have, just save and uh, be a long term thinker. All right, that's it. Pound that like button, people. Let me see if there were any questions. That was a really long one. I'm Adam Meister, the Bitcoin. Oh, Roman Q said uh, the government shouldn't even launch, couldn't even launch the Ob- Obamacare website. When the government takes over social media, they will be 
unusable within a day. How will these uh, status survive without Facebook? Well, that, luckily, it, it's not being pro proposed that the government take over social media, just that they regulate it. Uh, because you're absolutely right. They can't build a darn thing. They can they, they can attempt their regulation does slowly ruin things, though. It it, it definitely does. But again, it, people should see, like, yeah, people want the government to solve healthcare, yet they know they couldn't even build the, the how horrible the Obamacare websites were and everything broke and how everything's got gotten more expensive uh because of government intervention. But fear, panic, disease. All that really hits emotionally hard with certain people, uh, especially in this feminized country. Even men it become like little girls. Uh, and, and, dude, if you're a healthy dude, take a stand. Take a stand like me against all this nonsense. Don't go down that girly rabbit hole, okay? Take a stand against this. Um, don't become more go government. Speak out against the government. They're not always right. They're not your mommy and your daddy. I'm Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Pound that like button. Bang that bell button. Subscribe to this backup channel. Subscribe to the, the main channel. Thanks a lot, dudes. That was like a record long show. I will say hi to you dudes in the chat. Bye-bye.